All right, guys, I just dumped out this box from Fast Charlie. See what it is he came up with. Looks like we got a bunch of... Uh, some of these are kind of rustic looking locks with with keys and looks like he named some of them. Why Try by Fast Charlie. That's kind of cool. It looks like a kind of keyway is that. Quick set keyway. We have Latrine Duty. That's enticing. That makes me want to pick pick that lock up. Um, prank Call on a Yale keyway. And all the keys here. And it looks like we have a little American... Well, he's got it covered up by a no sheep. I guess. Don't be timid. Probably an 1100 or a 1300. Hard to say. That's glued on there. And then what appear to be some picks. So let's take a look at these guys. Tool by Fast Charlie. Pull foam out. All right. Okay. All right, it looks like Charlie, it arrived intact, but it looks like the glue that held the wood handle, I can epoxy that back on there, no problem. So it looks like a custom made, kind of a short hook, a little bit less than a short hook. And it feels like it's about 25 thousandths. So that's cool, I'll glue that back, Charlie. And another one. Now that one's got brass pins in it, and that's kind of a neat looking, neat color of wood. Hard to figure out what that is. This one is much thinner. So we have what pretty close to a short hook on probably 15 thousandths. Very cool picks. In fact, I will try. Why don't we just get this stuff out of here? I'm gonna grab the don't be timid guy because they're so easy to clamp up in the vise. And I'll try to use one of these two picks and see if we can get into it. All right, let's put him right side up. We've got a key here somewhere in that pile, but hopefully we don't need that stinking key. I'm going to try this guy, the 15,000. Well, if there's a six one back there, he's really light. So we'll just pick until it opens. How about that? All right, I'm going to use a top of the keyway. All right, I'm going to move this just a little bit. Give me some room here. And let's try this guy. This is a challenge lock, so see how it plays out. Okay, that was pin five. That was four. Wow, very crunchy. I got a little bit of a false set going. Well, I might have just overset. I think that might have been bounce on the core, not, not counter rotation. Yeah, I think I might have screwed this one up. Oh, no, there it is. Pin five, counter rotation on him. I'll tell you what, he's a little bit flexy for me. I'm going to pick this guy up without, well, the out there, without the other half of the handle. So I'm going to use, see if I can get him to work this way. How about that? Need something a little stiffer to force the pins to see if it's giving me counter rotation. It's a pretty wide open keyway, so that's one advantage. Okay, that was pin one. Oh. Okay, that is pin five, counter rotation. Oh, very deep fault set now. 
and he's dead. He's definitely set. Oop, that was falling off the warding. All right, I'm gonna have to swap out this pick. Much as I'd like to pick with your picks, Charlie, I've got a feeling that we got some deep set ones back there somewhere. So I'm gonna grab my rat yoke, deep hook. Okay, that was definitely five. Okay, that is four, counter rotation, very slight. Five, counter rotation, very slight. No, no, ma major counter rotation. Oh, and I got a very deep fault set. All right, now I believe six comes into play, and there we go. I felt him pop up and got a click off of him. All right, let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what Fast Charlie's got in here. I don't think I'm zoomed in. Hope I wasn't too timid for you. Uh, I do have a key somewhere over here. Mm, maybe not. Oh, here it is. Here it is. There is a key. There we go. Wow. I'm glad I didn't see that first. I probably would have been a little bit too timid. Um, I've already got them open. Let's pull them out, and then we'll try the key. Just in case. All right. What have we got? Is he not the right size? Nope. Feels like he's almost stripped. Nope, I got it. Okay, we got some major... Aye, aye, aye. All right, I'm not going to get credit for this. Battery died. I had my auxiliary battery hooked up, but not turned on. That'll teach me. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, I do have a anti-bypass wafer. And we got some modifications on the back here. Don't know what that's all about. These usually come with a half of a half moon, so I don't, oh, that's not normal. It's definitely not normal. All right, well, let's see what we got. I don't remember picking that guy. I don't know what he is, I have no clue. All right, let's make sure the key works. And if it doesn't, there will be no video. How about that? It does work. Cool. Okay. That might just be limiting us to 90 degree turn. That's my guess. There's probably a groove cut into the core, and he's got an Allen screw in there to stop us from doing that. So that means it's probably going to stop me from pulling the core. So I probably have to pull them out first. So, some of these guys over here. Too small. Too big, I think. Yep. Too hot, too cold. This one's just right. No, it's not either. It was the first one. Huh. All right, so it looks like uh, as if it matters because this is homemade. So 1.5 millimeter. All right, get that out of the way so I don't knock it down. 
Yeah, now we can rotate him the full. So he was not a pin. So it had me kind of freaked out. I thought there was something I bumped open by accident. All right, I can hear you guys. I heard it. A crescendo of people yelling, Shim! Whoa, don't do that, don't do that. There's something definitely in there, something sharp that's preventing that shim from going in. All right. So, <laughs> you know, I just noticed this too. You notice that little chunk missing right there? And it looks like Bondo is covering that up. And Bondo's covering that hole up too. This lock has seen better days. There we go. Okay, I got it past that first one the bondo hole but that as far as it's going all right here we go let me just in case if this is a disaster right now there'll be a warning right there to cover your eyes and hide the children so let's just go for it all right indeed there are six the sixth one i have to say looks pretty pretty wallowed out on that side. The rest of these look pretty normal. I have no idea what that is. That might have been a start hole for, for this groove here to stop the rotation. That's my guess. All right, we have a serrated spool key pin, homemade. We have a double serrated. We have a triple serrated tapered pin. That's kind of cool. Number four, ah, standard. Wrong neighborhood, dude. What you doing down here? Serrated. And then number six, also serrated. And we got some real nastiness here. We have two threaded holes, one and three. Number two is normal. What are you doing around here? Four is the same. And then five and six have very, very deep undercuts. Six is undercut on both sides. Five is undercut only if I picked it clockwise. How tricky is that? That's the first. I always point that out. I've always expected somebody to do that, and this is the first time somebody actually did it. We got a little groove cut here, and that's simply to stop us from rotating past 90 degrees. That's all that's for. I still don't know what that is. No clue. It's Bondo. There's nothing moving in there, and it doesn't look like it goes all the way through. I think the reason he put this on the back is to stop me from trying to bypass. That would be my guess. Okay. Let's see what kind of trouble he's gotten into on the top here. Serrated, commercial. Serrated, commercial. Oh, here we got what appears to be. Oh, I was going to say it's one of the chess pieces, but it's not. It's a homemade, made out of a key pin. Oddly, the pointy end was pointed down towards the core. I think I would have flipped him around the other way, but that's the way he came out. That would make it a little easier for me to pick past him. Number four. Another homemade one, again, made from a key pin. It is a, it looks like a spool. Double spool. Let's flip it around and go from the other side so we can watch him jump. Number six that I didn't feel. Now you see why I didn't feel him. I mean, he's just barely, barely hanging there. And he is quite intricately cut. Multiple levels. He was caught up actually in the threading or in the spring with a serration on the end. This looks like it might have been made out of a screw. Very nicely done. 
And the spring is not coming out. So I think he was caught in the spring. And then number five, same kind of thing, a little chess piece looking thing with some serrations and a spool all built in. And five also doesn't want to, oh, the shim is holding him in. No, he didn't either. All right, they look like they might be caught up as into some threads or something in there. Let's take a look. Baby spring. Baby spring. Six definitely is threaded, but five, oddly, was not. Five, again, we got some psychological warfare. Notice we have threads here to make me believe that five is threaded, but five is not threaded. He just threaded this piece just to throw me off. What a great job. Okay. Somebody's listening. All right, guys, here's what we're looking at. All homemade pins on the bottom except for number four, who is a standard pin. And then on the top, we had a commercial serrated, commercial serrated. All the rest of these are homemade, very intricate looking little guys. But the only one that's going to snag in the threaded chamber at the top was number six. So there you go. Fast, fast Charlie. I appreciate all the work you put into this. Appreciate all the locks and I will get to them and I will certainly glue this guy back on. I did not treat him rough. I don't know why he came off. Where'd he go? There he is. But I'll be careful and I will epoxy him back on there and hopefully he'll earn a place up here in the stand. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.